G'day battlers, and today we're doing some Catacomb Cup battles for the first time up against WizApp7 and then not running Newman later in the video. Now, WizApp7 does have a YouTube channel that'll be linked in the description below, and we're going with Venusaur up against Swilus, which is not a good matchup. If you haven't looked already, I do have a meta simplified guide for the Catacomb Cup, so you can click up there to watch that first, or in the description below, or at the end of the video, then you can come back and watch these battles so that you've kind of got an idea of what's going on in the cup. But uh, Venusaur, we kind of threw the Frenzy Plant to just put some damage on or threaten a shield off of Wizap and then switch into his wireless of our own, knowing that we could be able to win that matchup out. Uh, it has let him switch out into Drapion, who's going to tear through us because of the super effective Ice Fang. We're going to get a Body Slam off just to chip it down a bit before we go down. Uh, then we're going to bring back in Venusaur because we have a little bit of energy, kind of hoping that we can get a Frenzy Plant off before we go down. It does get a Charge move off and we're thinking that it's probably an Aqua Tail. Maybe we can tank it and then get to a Frenzy Plant still, maybe? Uh, it looks like we might actually. Yes, we can get to a Frenzy Plant before we go down. So that's definitely fantastic there. And then we do have Legacy Bug Bite Beedrill in the back. Now, I should mention that uh, in this video, we're going to be using unique picks in the, in the cup. So you see... Uh, Beedrill here, we're not going to use Beedrill again in this video, uh, for the first five battles at least. The sixth one, a little bit different, but yeah. For the first five battles, we're using completely unique picks, so we're going to see all sorts of stuff that is in the Catacomb Cup. So, in comes Umbreon in the back. Now, this is where Beedrill would be nice to have if you had Exorcer, but because I have the Legacy Bug Butt Quick move, uh, I decided to not have a Bug Charge move. Doesn't do me very well in the Umbreon matchup, so we are doing super effective with the Bug Butt, just not really doing anything super effective with the Charge move, so... Shield up with the foul play here, and then I think we're going for the Aerial Ace, because Aerial Ace is just uh, cheaper, so we kind of want to burn the shields off of Wizap. We don't have a shield ourselves anymore, so the foul play definitely going to come through and hurt. Uh, and yeah, we decided to just kind of go, uh, we'll see how much Sludge Bomb does, uh, in case he like, didn't shield this time. But uh, maybe, as it turns out, I should have gone for the Aerial Ace, because it's possible that I would have been able to get to two Aerial Aces and actually win out that battle. Uh, so I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, definitely GG's. Uh, and if I, I don't, I'm not sure if I actually already said it already, but uh, if I haven't, uh, Wizap7's YouTube channel link will, will be in the description below. I can talk today. Now, we've got Ice V Ice here. Lapras is another big pick in this cup, just because it's so very bulky, just like the Umbreon. Like, I, mean, I mean, as I said in the Medicine Simplified video, Umbreon doesn't look too threatening, but the fact that it is so bulky is why it is so good in this cup, because you can just outlast all sorts of things if you, like, have an extra shield. I mean, <laughs> oh man, Umbreon is killing it. So we land a Skull Bash from Lapras onto the Glalie, which absolutely tears through that Glalie and also buffs up our defense. So we really don't have to worry about any charge move from the Glalie, and it is another Gyro Ball. So yeah, we can just uh, probably farm this thing all the way down, and we can. Uh, and then we'll see what comes in. We're probably going to go for another Skull Bash just because he's probably going to expect a Shield Bait, but it's actually Snowy Cast form. So we brought Double Ice into this game, which uh, is a little bit unfortunate when you're up against Lapras, especially because Snowy Cast form has a double ice move set or uh, Snowy Cat Swarm doesn't have any charge moves that are not ice type so not going to do very well up against Lapras especially after now being a double Skull Bash defense buffed so I'm assuming whatever he's he has in the back is going to be weak to the Lapras uh, so yeah this is kind of why Lapras is so scary in this cup also so much bulk just going to tear through these ice types going for another Skull Bash uh, I'm not sure if we're like maxed out on the defense at this point but uh, we go for it burn one shield off of Wizap thinking that maybe we can not shield this and then farm all the way down, uh, but at the same time, uh, this, it might take a while because this isn't, yeah, to farm it all the way down. And then in comes Vespaquin in the back. So I'm wondering if maybe it would have been a better idea to bring in Vespaquin instead of Snowy Cast form. Uh, I mean, I guess in hindsight, 2020, yeah, it would be a better idea because we just tore through the entirety of the uh, of the words, 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 Snowy Cast form as well. Uh, maybe you could have brought down the Lapras, I don't know. But anyway, Vespaquin comes in, takes us out, uh, and we're able to bring in Vespaquin of our own, and because we have the shield advantage here, we're going to be able to shield up his charge move, hope that it's a power jam, and then go for the power jam ourselves. And it is the power jam, so he was hoping that we thought it was a bait. Uh, and yeah, power jam, going to be able to do tons of damage onto this uh, opposing Vespaquin. And boom! Out goes for the Vespaquin, so that is a GG's there. So going into the third battle up against Wizap7, uh, Capcom Cup, I definitely don't, uh, I don't think I am through it enough to be able to give a good opinion. I'm not really sure, <laughs> uh, like, you know, how Paper Scissors Rocky or how this or that this cup is. Uh, so definitely still just kind of playing through, testing it around. Now we have Drapion up against Umbreon, which ideally we would have Fell Stinger here just to ramp up our Ice Fang damage as well as having, like, I mean, it's technically super effective damage onto Umbreon, but it's not like Fell Stinger is a big damaging move. It's the equivalent to... It's a Bug-type power-up punch. That's the, the equivalent. So, uh, anyway, a little bit of lag there, but going for an Aqua Tail here, just chipping down the Umbreon because we're not going to go for crunches. 
Aqua Tail going for that neutral damage instead. So we have brought it down into the yellow before he brought us to the yellow, but we're going to get brought down in this move. So Fair Play comes through. And then we're kind of thinking, okay, do we burn a shield so we can get an Aqua Tail off? Do we let Drapen go down and then try and farm up the Umbreon with something else? Uh, we're going to burn the shield because we can definitely get to an Aqua Tail, or at least we hope. Uh, we can get to an Aqua Tail before another charge move comes through. I wasn't keeping track to see whether he had extra energy on the Umbreon or not, but we throw the charge move, get a shield off him, and I think we were thinking about switching into Victory Bowl to farm to, uh, I guess, aggressively take down the Umbreon, but decided that it wasn't worth the switch advantage. So now, let it go down, bring in Victory Bell, and get it take away that Umbreon. And then in comes Drapion of his own. So, going to be doing super effective to the uh, to the Victory Bell with the Ice Fang. And then we have Makargo in the back. Makargo is a pick that I thought might be really interesting, uh, but... Uh, I brought into this matchup and I really shouldn't have because uh, as soon as I switched in I was like oh no Drapion's got Aqua Tail oh no <laughs> we've got a fire and rock typing we're going to be so weak to that water damage so uh, we were hoping that we could maybe get to a rock throw before uh, an Aqua Tail come through but yeah that, that did not happen so here comes the Aqua Tail almost takes out the, the Makago uh, thinking that we could yeah we can farm down and then going to get a charge move off onto whatever's in the back it was a bug type I'm pretty sure they're going for the, over the overheat gets that shield uh, ideally we would have like been able to save that uh, overheat until later but because the switch timer wasn't up we kind of didn't have a choice but to just go for it bring in victory bell now and gonna get taken out by that best friend so uh yeah oh, about to get taken out anyway so ggs with up seven and again his link will be in the description below i'm not sure why i'm struggling to speak so much but uh yeah going up against not Randy newman who is one of my patrons so thank you a lot for supporting the channel really do appreciate that and again we're going to keep the unique train rolling so the nine picks that you've just seen you are not going to see them now so we're going in with pseudo wudo mirror match and pseudo wudo again as i went over in that meta simplified infographic uh sort of video uh, Sudo Wudu is an absolute beast in this cup, like it's insane how much of the cup it beats. It can beat down the ice types, the bug types, the grass types, the whatever. Now, uh, so we got the CMP, so we're looking like, okay, uh, that means we're going to win in this matchup. Uh, but see what happens here. This is the new bug that Niantic has brought in with the recent update, the move desync. So because of that move desync, he was going to be able to get to a charge move before us because his turn started a little bit earlier. So we tried to switch into a long and muck to take the rock slide because we knew we'd lost at that point. It was like, you know, it's the game's fault, but uh, yeah, we, we were going to lose. So we brought in the and muck trying to catch it and we caught an earthquake, which took out the Alolan and muck entirely. Uh, so now we're like, ah, this isn't great. So for us, that's coming in, farming down the Cedar Widow because counter wouldn't do too much damage. And then in comes Beedrill. So at this point, we're kind of like, okay, this actually isn't looking too bad. We can go for these avalanches, going to do a fair chunk of damage. Let's it go through, and Beedrill can actually tank an avalanche from Frostlass, which uh, I don't think I was expecting, but uh, it turns out he can. Uh, I'm not really versed in the Beedrill matchups past, because uh, I didn't do any tournaments that started after Beedrill Community Day for the Sorceress Cup, so I wasn't too clear about how bulky or not bulky it was. But yeah, another avalanche, and we're able to take it out. In comes the Umbreon, and at this point, we're kind of like, uh-oh, <laughs> we're going to be taken out by the first Dark Charge move that comes our way. Uh, Frostlass is going to be su uh, taking super effective damage from that because of the ghost typing, so we tried to to sack swap the pseudo wudo unfortunately it looks like we weren't able to do that because he got a snarl off because we saw the animation come through do land a rock slide but yeah it looks like he has not gone for a charge move he's going for one now to i guess make sure that he can take out the pseudo wudo and probably has enough energy going for the dark pulse probably has enough energy to take out yeah so this will take out the frost last and that will be ggs for frost last so frost last dominating in the sorceress cup not as dominating here it seems um you know, maybe I used in the wrong spot. Obviously, we brought it up against Umbreon, but uh, yeah, going into the next battle with Scolipede up against Venusaur. Scolipede, obviously, in a very good spot here because we have that bug typing doing poison damage up against the Venusaur. Poison isn't super effective because of the poison typing, but we're still doing a fair chunk, and then these bug charge moves are going to do a fair chunk. So, Exeter gets the shield, switching out into uh, Jumpluff. So, also going to be weak to Scolipede. So, I was like, okay, uh, maybe he's got like triple weak to Scolipede, which is going to be all right for us. Uh, but we're going to tank this charge move, I think, which maybe we should know of because we knew that uh scholarpeed was going to be good uh but we charge up a little bit more energy and then switch into a and graveler now we should have vault switch on this and graveler turns out we have rock throw uh and this is a very spicy pick like you know it's ranked 36 or whatever uh it's not one that you're going to see much of but you know we're trying all sorts of stuff out in this video so we can get an idea of what is going on in this cup so uh yeah we are along the graveler was taken out bringing the scholarpeed get another exit off probably going to let it go down yeah it does let it go down 
and then in comes the, the Victory Bell. I was going to say Venusaur because I saw the Grass Poison typing, but no, uh, he's brought in Triple Grass here. So Scolipede is absolutely going to uh, wreck the team. Uh, I guess the Poison Jabs again are going to be neutral damage up against both the Victory Bell and the Venusaur, as opposed to, uh, actually, is it super effective to jump off? I'm not actually certain. But we threw the x Scissor and then switching to Shiftery because we still have two shields at this point, so we can get this Leaf Blade off, which will take out the, the Victory Bell, and then we're guaranteed to be able to get Foul Plays off to take out the Venusaur before Venusaur can take out us uh, by getting three Frenzy Plants off to burn two shields and then land a Frenzy Plant. So, yeah, we're definitely looking very good in this matchup. And I should mention now, going to the last battle, I decided to, uh, I didn't really have more unique picks to use in the top 50, so instead we are going right back into like the top meta pick. So we're going Zoilus, we're going Umbreon, and we're backing him up with Vespaquin uh, lead, I think. So we're backing, uh, actually we might have Zoilus in the lead, and then Vespaquin and Umbreon in the back. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, once and I'll take out the Venusaur, and that is GG's there. So going to the last battle of the video, which reminds me, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Plenty more Catacamb Cup content coming out through the rest of the month, or through the next month I guess including next month but Swilus up against Shifty which is actually a pretty good matchup for us we're going to be resisting Snarl uh, resisting actually all of Shifty moves I'm pretty sure unless he's got Hurricane uh, that might hurt but that was a little quick so it is a Leaf Blade gonna resist it and then just gonna a uh, little bit of lag by the seams of it but I think we caught up so maybe it wasn't really lag but get the Dark Pulse off and this will hit like a truck onto the Frostlass so uh, a little bit scary it was hoping that he maybe thought it was a Body Slam Shield Bait uh, but or maybe we're trying to catch a body slam, I don't know. But we're happy to switch into Umbreon because we did have the, this uh, double dark team, uh, which is definitely looking very nice for us here. Getting able to get to this dark pulse straight away. Uh, gonna threaten that last shield off of the Frostlass or take out the Frostlass, basically. Yeah, burning the last shield. So we have the 2-0 shield advantage here. At this point, we were kind of like, uh, I'm not sure how much Avalanche is going to do. We might want to... We might want to just keep Umbreon a little bit safe. So we shield up and then go for the Dark Pulse here. Uh, and this is going to take out the Frostlass, or at least it should. Uh, better, better do. And boom, take out the Frostlass. And then in comes something. In comes the Shiftry. So Shiftry, knowing that he's going to have a pretty bad time up against the Zwilus, going to have a little bit of a better time up against Umbreon, uh, just because those Leaf Blades are going to be neutral instead of resisted. Uh, we're able to get to this last resort, though, before Shiftry can take us out. So this will uh, hurt that Shiftry. Doesn't quite take it out. Uh, he's probably going to yeah, get to a charge move to take us out. And we're just going to let, let it go down at this point. And then I think we're going to bring in the Vespaquin to farm up a little bit of energy on that Shiftry. Uh, yeah, just a little bit in case there was a Vespaquin mirror in the back. Turns out there's a Lachlan Graveler in the back. So Vespaquin is not having a good time here. But we charge up to this... Uh, what was the bug charge move? It wasn't an X, is it? It was... Uh, Bug Buzz. So yeah, Bug Buzz is going to hit like a truck into that Alolan Graveler, uh, which is kind of surprising because it's like, oh, shouldn't Alolan Graveler be beating us? But yeah, Bug Buzz is just a really good move. So we land the charge move and then switch into Zwilus, able to Dragon Breath down before we get hit by a charge move, and that is GG. So thank you to both WizApp7 and, uh, not Randy Newman, I was about to say Zwilus. Thank you to WizApp7 and Zwilus. Uh, I was going to say it again. This is un Thank you, not Randy Newman, for the battles. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Don't forget to like comment, subscribe, especially that subscribe one. Plenty more Catacomb Cup content coming soon, as I said. And yeah, thank you to my patrons, Melatime9458, Brad SF, Negative Ben 10, Yawurtle, and uh, Hero of the Second Half of the Video, Not Ready Newman, for supporting the channel, because again, I really do appreciate that. And yeah, also, Twitch link, description below if you want to go give that a follow. Might be streaming soonish. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and see you in the next Catacomb Cup video.